So first things first, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, doing well as uh, as well. Thank you for asking. Now, I heard the new album being described as kind of the culmination of what the band has been up to since its inception. So what I would like to do is kind of go through that journey that you as a band have uh, gone through and then kind of see uh, a couple of things from your perspective. So let's start in the beginning. When you joined wow. the band, <laughs> yeah, what was it? What what were the thoughts in your head? You're you're a young guy uh, playing music, getting in, getting yourself into a band um, that was just starting up in a way. So so what what yeah. was the mindset at that point? It's kind of crazy because, um, well, I was in a so I, I knew the guys already. Um, sure, I knew Danny. I was in a, I was in like a local band with Danny, like when we were at college and. Uh, me and Danny also we were doing music tech music tech um at York College and uh, Cameron okay. was also doing that and he was in another local band with he uh, and his drummer was James so okay. there was two bands in York really between us and then Ben came and kind of plucked who wanted to make this back you know to to to, to he had this this idea and um so uh, I actually joined last I came later uh, a few months after they'd already kind of flown to the US and like kind of felt out like what they wanted to do um so like about two three months after they first did that i uh i was asked to join um so they had already recorded a few like i think three demos and threw it on the myspace so i i was already aware of like their band the band because i was friends with them and obviously demos were out and i was a huge fan sure. so um you know I, I think uh, I was working like just some kind of retail job and I, okay. I shouldn't have had my phone on me at the time. And I got a text from Danny and he's like, can you come around to my house tonight? Um, I've got big news. And I was like, what do you mean? Is it good news? And he's like, it's good for everyone. And I, I just remember like a friend who all, like gave me a lift straight from work to his house. And that's where I kind of got sat down and said, look, we really want you to be in the band. Like um, this, 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 like, and it obviously wasn't, anything no one you really knew of the band at all by then um it was still really early days so right for me it was um i was just like yes let's go you know i was ready <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to drop everything and, and, and go do this so at that point uh at that age what is the dream 17 uh well i was <laughs> i pretty much music was everything for me but then i was uh I was not only in my little local band, I was like in other bands as well, helping people out who, who you know, filling in for people and stuff. So like my, I've been going to like the local scene since I was, before I was even allowed to get in venues, I was getting in venues because okay. I have an older brother who plays drums and he was always in the local scene. He was like four years older than me. So I was always like the young kid that like was just helping load his drums in and then I got to stay <laughs> and stuff. So I was always like a bit more of a punk scene. Um, so to me, like when I got this up, you know, the call to do this, it was just, I knew there was a lot to do and there was a lot of uncertainties, but I already, I, I loved the, the, I think they had like three songs out and um, I was, I loved it. And I was a huge fan of, um, of, of what they were doing. Uh, not to mention I knew Danny, I knew Ben because we'd all been hanging out because it's a small town where we're from. I knew Cameron. Yeah. I was a huge fan of James and Cam's band at the time. So I was just like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. I didn't realize that Ben kind of like, fluffed it up a little bit and made it sound like it was already all figured out and it was like so i was like yeah let's go let's go and i got there i just remember getting to like new jersey thinking oh wow this really is just a parking lot and an idea <laughs> and here we are you know i'm 17 i've just dropped everything and i was like but it was fine we were crazy back then and uh you know we just had a lot of work to do and um we were all down for it you know at the time it was like you couldn't tell us anything there was no doubt in our minds that we weren't going to do it so <laughs> Was there a moment where everything fell into place then, where you kind of felt, okay, this is what we were dreaming of, this is what we were thinking of uh, doing with, with this music and trying to get out there? Yeah, um, I can't remember a specific moment, but when I look back and I think of the time period, I think it's, it's definitely when we were, uh, we dropped that first album, Stand Up and Scream, and it just, things just changed right there. We were, you know, I think we were on our first tour at the time. Oh, was it our second tour? First or second tour? I think it might have been the first, but it, it, it was crazy. It was like night and day. People mm. like just started showing up and then it just <laughs> it just snowballed. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of hype around it back then. And it was just like, it was almost a bit overwhelming because at the time we were just sure. kind of so focused on, I say so focused, as focused as you could be at the time. We were all a bit crazy and we were drinking and, and partying and stuff. But <laughs> Still young. Um, 
yeah, I was just kids, you know, like I was 17 and I just turned eight, I turned 18 in New Jersey, which, you know, in England, you wait for your 18th birthday so you can go out for a drink. But I had mine in America when you've got to wait another three years. <laughs> three years. <laughs> <laughs> so you're 21. But, um, you know, I think it was probably on that first tour. And uh, then obviously other tour offers started coming in and we started regularly seeing this growth happen right before our eyes. And, you know, reporting back home to family who were just like, what is going on over there? Like, mm. I'm, 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 you know, this is this is still MySpace days. It's not even like we're all connected sure. like we are now, you know. Um, trying to just kind of explain like we're we're doing it, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> but it was a it was a bit of a crazy one at first, you know. A lot of a lot of trust and just kind of throwing yourself at it and kind of you know if it goes well and cool. If not, we tried and like maybe not looking into certain things as much as we would now but like you're young you just you just go for it you know and i think that's a huge testament to where we are now you know sure but i can imagine for obviously you're a band and it's it's the thing you do collectively but you also go through uh, a development personally as a musician and, and as a person so how do you see that mm. progression progress sorry progression that you've made as a as a musician over the years how has have there been certain kind of milestones or or turning points for you absolutely for me personally yeah oh yeah definitely for me personally i'm always a i wasn't a bass player before i joined asking mm, alexander sure. i don't you know started guitar right that, like, i was a, i was a guitarist yeah I, yeah I played guitar and it was like at the time they just needed someone i was like yeah i'll, I'll go hell yeah let's <laughs> go and uh and uh, i felt like there was a bit of imposter syndrome at first like i was sure. just like i'm not doing this like i'm i don't know i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna give it everything and like as the years went on and like maybe like into our third record nah, yeah our third record uh, from death to destiny i think uh i remember we still did this with joey and i went in and i was just like look i really want to spend a bit more time like dialing this in and since then i think um my playing as a bit you know as a bass player has got significantly better and i've it's actually made me a better guitarist because it's made okay. me so much more versatile as a musician um i think that um without that i wouldn't be able uh, it just opened my mind to a completely different way of thinking as well and sure. uh said before as well today i did another interview and it was like it's really hard to balance the whole i see a lot of people like not realizing when less is more as well and for me as a musician like and as a guitarist like it's like learning in, on bass like your, your role there is obviously you're in the rhythm section but you've you're holding it down as well in a way where you don't have to be so flashy you just need it to be solid and in the pocket and uh instead of being so flashy for me, it was like taking that back step and just like, as, as you grow and you get a bit older, you're able to do that a bit more when you're young, you're just like, let's go, you know, let's, <laughs> I want to go crazy on, I want to do something here. I want to do something. But honestly, like my planes ironically got a lot better. And on, I don't know if you've heard the new album. Have you, have have, you heard yeah, the yeah. new record? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of really interesting, cool bass lines on this uh, new record. That's, and the mix is a little bit like, it's quite prominent in the mix too. So you can hear it. Um, unlike you could probably in previous records, but, uh, I'm, I'm proud of that line where it's like, you know, there's a lot of room in the verses on a lot of these songs where I'm able to kind of groove with James a little bit, but, and then just simplify it and make it sound as huge as possible when need be, you know, and let the vocals shine or even James shine. So it's like, you know, as a bass player, you've got to kind of learn that, that, that you've got to sit right in that sweet spot, you know? And it's important then that you mentioned uh, the rhythm section that you have a good chemistry then with with the drummer as well. So how do you kind of figure out that part? And and then let's take this new album as an example. How do you kind of figure out how to lay lay that foundation where the melody go? Uh, uh, um, stays well, James on top? is a fin yeah. James is a phenomenal drummer. He's he's an incredible musician by far the most accomplished musician in our band. Right. Okay. Um, so <laughs> in the beginning like it was all very, very much like we got thrown in at the deep end really because he was it was all rhythmic you know obviously breakdowns and rhythm rhythm so it's weird now because like i find myself and i could probably speak for the other guys is like we don't really think it's like mm. rhythmically like i'm so in sync with james now like i can kind of it just his style and everything i can already kind of tell where he's gonna where he's gonna go and it's been maybe just because we've been playing together for so long but um there's less focus on that now and more mm. a little bit i don't know it's not like we're trying to figure that out it's just that feels so natural now that like it's easy for us to kind of focus on the other stuff as well so um i have 
I have to give props to James though. He 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 probably start he probably joined this band and thought, well, what am I doing with these guys? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you um, have to catch he, up to him. Yeah, well, I've got a long way. He's a, he, he's phenomenal, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got real good chemistry, and you know, we're not just musicians, and you know, we don't just work together in a band. We're like brothers now at this point. You know, we've we've gone through all our life, and it's not sure. it's like you said, it's not just development musically. It's uh, personally, we've developed a lot together and gone through right. a lot together. You know. Well, you yeah, mentioned. Album, uh, yeah. Sorry, eighth album now. You know, it's been we've been doing it a while. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's I think um, kind of the magic of a band like yours as well, where there ha hasn't been as much uh, lineup changes as well. So you get that foundation and you get to build on totally. it. So, so as you as you mentioned, now it's kind of uh, subconscious that you do a lot of that stuff, and that's that, that must be. Is, you know, that must be the best feeling when you're on stage or even in the rehearsal room, oh, just that flow state. Totally, totally. And it's um, it's great, but it also comes with it's like, you know, if something happens, like, for example, like James broke his foot. I don't know right. if you heard, like, recently. Yeah, um, yeah. We were in Estonia and we had already loaded in. We were in the venue and he could he was in urgent care and we were like, how bad is it? Like, we're ready to play the show at this point. And he came in and uh, tried to get behind the kit and play, and it was just no way. He couldn't even walk. It was like okay. he broke his – it was bad. And we were just like – it just kind of put us in a position where it was like, whoa, we are so – we take it for granted, I think, that we are so, like, in sync with each other and gel mm -hmm. together. So, you know, not to mention it's pretty hard just to last minute fill in on for James. He's He's got <laughs> some techniques that, you know, not a lot of players, right. you know, use. So, uh yeah, it comes, it's great, but, you know, it also comes with, like, kind of, we all have, have had lots of conversations. I'm actually talking to him, right? He was just, he's just texting me right now, actually, and he's talking to me. We've been talking a lot and just kind of, like, you know, making sure we're all a little bit more on it, taking care of ourselves and making sure that we're uh, ready for this upcoming tour that we're about to come up, we're embark on. So, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. Like, we take it for granted sometimes, the fact that, you know, all of us have been doing this for so long. But um, when it clicks on stage and you just look around and you're just, like, it's like the best feeling ever, man. When you're with your best friends and you just, sure. you just like, you just have a moment of like, wow, we were able, we, you know, we've been doing this for so long, but we're still able to do this and have so much fun doing it, and it's just great. Yeah, very fortunate. Yeah, yeah and uh, well wishes to James, of course. Hopefully, he, uh, his foot heals very soon and he gets uh, gets he's practice. Good now, man. He's, oh, he's he's sent me a video. Of, he okay, sent me a video of him good. playing. Yeah, he's he got back on the kit. I think uh, yesterday or the day before. Okay. Oh, I think he posted his Instagram and he he was showing his heel toe and he's like, "Yeah, I'm back in action." Like he was, he's been taking his PT like his uh, uh, really seriously and since yeah. he got back and like, yeah, he's good to go now. I think he's excited. We all are. That's that's awesome to hear. Now I have one last question about kind of the 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 overall story of the band before we delve into a couple of things of the new record. Cool. But is there yeah. a specific era that you are fond of within the band is there a, was there a specifically fruitful uh time within the band for you maybe a certain album maybe when when uh like the third album was the biggest um in terms of uh, chart success and those kind of things was there a period somewhere within the the lifetime of the band that was particularly fruitful to you Fruitful in what way? Financially or just... No, no, of... no, 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 no. Well, <laughs> that's not none of my business. Uh, but it's, no, it's, yeah, it's... I'm just wondering, you mean... Yeah. No, no, I mean, I mean more creatively and, and it can be collectively okay. as well, but more creatively or in terms of kind of the the, the output of the band where, where you thought, okay, you now we were, that period we were really rolling. Yeah, and I don't know if people will agree with me, but that's the beauty of it. Like, it's, it's fully subjective. So I'll give you my yeah. personal take on it and... Uh, the last album we did, See What's on the Inside, to me was something that was, uh, it was an album that we all needed together. Um, mm -hmm. We needed to create that album in the way, it, it, it was like food for the soul for us really. Like it was really like, we kind of went in there not thinking about anyone or anything and just reconnecting because it was during COVID and everyone's head and everyone was, everything was everywhere. So we just got in a studio in the middle of nowhere and we, we just made music together without thinking too much about everything else and that's the thing about being in a band especially a band when you when you blow up and have got a lot of success you immediately have so many eyes on you and what you can do and what you can't do and what this and and people pulling you every which way so mm. you know creatively to stay true to yourself and honest you've got to do things like that just to kind of ground yourself a little bit and uh, we did that when we went in and did see what's on the inside it's still got a lot of ballads of emotional music in there and uh 
we had um I play piano on the on the record, and for me, okay. it was just like creative. Yeah, all the piano is me. I'm, I'm not okay. pissed, but yeah, you know, we were in the studio. <laughs> I'm, and Matt I'm, was I'm, like, I'm trying I'm, right now, dude. I've got one over there too, and I'm I'm trying. <laughs> but they they put me in position. They, the band puts me in situations <laughs> I'm not ready for. Like like I've played on stage. Like the first time I ever played on stage was like we were on an, on an arena tour with Shine Down, and I'm stood up there like shaking. <laughs> but I play piano, I'm like what. The why are they doing this to me but um it's good to push yourself and we pushed ourselves uh, in the studio for that record and the, the result of that I, I think forever will be something that we're so proud of just because it's like it's something that we needed to make and it's the last album and this one that we're doing now is more like you said is a is a combination of everything we've done and it's more of a gift to the fans like you know it's got elements of asking that's from the you know the the beginning you know the heavy side the mm-hmm. you know there's all the, we've we've done so many different we've gone on so many journeys creatively like no album has been the same that we've just needed to kind of create something that was like a more of a give back to people and think a little bit more about the fans that have been with us since day one and like what, what have they been what have they been you know <laughs> crying for and like listen to them a little bit more and uh and, and honestly by doing that we didn't realize the result of the record was going to be like we love it I, i'm i'm like so over the moon with how it came out and i think that it's probably lit a fire in us again just to kind of like explore those previous um origins of asking a little bit more you know like maybe not stray from the path a little bit too much and uh get creative within that realm a little bit more you know i think one one of the things that kind of automatically happens where with something like a, a pandemic is you start to look back and one of the things that once you start playing music that was a little bit more in line with what you used to play it can bring back those nostalgic memories so perhaps it's it's something like that absolutely but- no absolutely it definitely did and it we played one of them on this we just did a european festival run um mm. uh, once ago and uh, we we put dark void in the set and it was like okay it like took me back. It like got me emotional. I'm playing on stage. I'm like, whoa! Like th- the energy that we used to have. Well, Dark Void has that energy, and like to see the response from the crowd and see them just like absolutely like come alive. It was it was awesome, and we love we, we love that. And I think this record definitely had that in mind of like how are these songs going to be portrayed live? And yeah, I was um, I was going to say that. Sorry to interrupt, but I was going to say that that it, it sounds like an album that would do uh, really well live because it's just so energetic, but it also has those dynamics in where you break things down and then build it up uh, again. And Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, as a musician, that must be the most fun on stage as well, where you just rock out. Totally. Essentially, that's why you started. So, um, <laughs> Totally, totally. So if we get into one of the songs, we, we mentioned the the bass lines a little bit. Uh, for instance, I, I think Let the Dead Take Me is, is one of those, I, I assume it's a bass uh, riff. So, yeah, yeah, it is. It's got a lot of effects on it, but it's very, you know, with the fuzz and the distortion and stuff. But it's, uh, it's a bit of a curveball, that one. It's a bit different mm. for us. Um, and me, I, I actually had that sent to me from Matt and he's like, what do you think of this and stuff? And I was like, well, this is, this is sick, you know, this is awesome. But at first I was just like, okay, like, all right, we're gonna. We're, and I wasn't sure because, like, it was one of the fir- one of the suit one of the first ones I got sent. I was like, but honestly, like, it's it stands alone for me that one. I love and I love the bridge in it too. How, it, mm. like you said, the dynamics of the song, like you've got that energy with the the driving bassline straight away, and then it kind of just completely just dissipates into the bridge, and you've got this kind of like journey with Danny vocally taking over, um, and then it just comes right back again with that. I, I love it. I, I honestly do. I, and no one's no one's heard it yet, but <laughs> it's uh, it's one of my favorites for, for obvious reasons, you know. Then you mentioned fun. something as well. The Danny's song is is quite uh, diverse on the album as well. He uses his voice in many different ways. So so yeah. What has it been like? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I don't know how to phrase this right, but but just witnessing him singing those songs because when I listen to the album and you hear those those uh, slower parts where you can really hear his voice and stuff, well, what is it yeah, like yeah. in the studio when you're when everything comes together and you hear that voice coming in and the... dude, that guy surprises me every time, man. Like like we we record music and then he'll a lot of the times we'll have the music written and then he'll come in and he'll he'll do his thing. Um, again, there's like he's just released this photo book um from the last album we did and that was when we were all together and we i was in the kitchen of the studio and he's like all right guys he came out of the studio and he's like, i've got it come and listen 
and I went in and um, he's able to do this every every damn time. Like he, he, he it's his. It's, I don't know if it's his tone, his lyrics. <laughs> his lyrics. His lyrics are great, but he's um, he nailed it on that one. And like, it surprises me like that he can go. He, it's really hard to explain. Like these dynamics of uh, Danny King. You never know what you're going to get with him. He's like a mm. complete wild card. Um, but he 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 did it on the last record with "You've Made It This Far" for me, and there's a picture he took, and I just of me just responding, but my reaction to hearing his vocals for the first time over this music we'd made, and it was genuinely just like whoa, I felt like a fan, <laughs> like like I was just like damn, like this this is crazy, like this these lyrics, this melody is like everything I need to, I need to hear right now, mm. like. I'm not even in the band at this point. I'm just listening to something incredible. And he did it again on this last one um, with Where Do We Go From Here? Like he wrote that song on his own and sent it to us. And it's just so powerful and it's like moving. And like, I've been in a band with him for nearly 15 years and he, he still like moves me when he brings mm -hmm. like, like it's crazy. You never know. <laughs> so to me, it's like, I'm, I feel very lucky. Really, really lucky. He's a crazy dude. Don't get me wrong. He comes <laughs> with all his craziness. Danny's mental. He's, he's crazy, but he's a, uh, he's, he's very talented and he's uh he, he keeps shocking me over the years and it's just a pleasure you know it's, those moments are like it's really hard to find that you know so uh, i feel really fortunate yeah rounding off them because you mentioned kind of his uh his lyrics and then what he brings to the band as well do you discuss those lyrics and then is there one song in particular lyrically on the album that you that that uh touched you yeah the one i just mentioned um okay. where do we go from here i just think that that one's just which again became the title of the album just lyrically we thought that the title of the song was just like you know i think that everyone could take their own meaning from it and what you know whether whether danny i, I would let him explain the reasoning yeah. behind that song is but for me we just thought immediately like his, it was just such a poignant question that it doesn't matter what you're doing in life um you can ask yourself that question like where do we go from here where do i go from here like you're doing whatever you're doing right now and i'm doing whatever i'm doing right now but who's to say what we're going to be doing in five ten years like especially yeah. after what's happened in the past five ten years you know oh, um, and we see it it's like a great since it's a, an album for the fans it's a question like us and the fans like we're all in we're all here together aren't we like we're asking this where do we go from here that's not where do us five go from here like where do we all go from here like you're mm -hmm. the listener and the band like it's a question that we should all be asking. Well, we all do ask. And it's like, I don't think anybody's got the answer fully, truly, because life has its way of taking you where it wants to. But um, uh, it is a, it is a, it is a question that everyone's asking. And we've, we're, I'm 32 now. And I started this from when I was 17. So, right. and we've had, we've got a lot of fans that were kids when they first heard us and now uh, new parents and going through life at the same time as us. So it's like, again it's a question not just for us it's a question for our fans like what we're all here doing this together like we've been doing this together <laughs> you've been listening we've been playing together for a long time so where do we go from here you know life and it's hopefully something that people can relate with you know yeah like you said there is no answer because life is way too complex uh to figure that out but yeah do you have a as a band do you set goals in a sense it doesn't have to I'm be. Uh, do, do you set goals in a sense, or do you, do you work towards certain certain? Oh, things? we set we set uh, completely ridiculous goals. Okay. Goals that you would never even <laughs> goals that you feel like you know you'd hear out loud. You'd be like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" But that's the reason, you know. We've got um, we've all you know we've always had we always set ourselves goals that are borderline unattainable, just so that we can <laughs> keep pushing ourselves. You know, like sometimes it's nice to get brought down to earth again, but. Um, but it's yeah, a good attitude all, to have, I think. Yeah, no, you, you definitely like larger than life kind of goals. Like, and there's no reason. Um, you know, it sounds really cliche, but like shooting for the stars is like such mm. a genuine thing that what we did when we were kids, before we even knew anybody knew who we were, before that first album dropped, we were five teenagers living in a parking lot on the other side of the world, just <laughs> telling everyone that we were gonna be this. We were gonna do it. We were gonna. Just wait, just watch, and it and it and it really did. It it, it happened, and uh, you know, there's something in that. I think definitely. I think that's a beautiful place to end the interview. So, Sam, yeah. may I thank you so much uh, for your time? No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>